Everybody, give an awesome welcome to Anthony Armstrong. Can I give a stool? Can I give a stool? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, iPod dude. <laughs> so can we agree as a community, as a collective of minds, that the weed is too strong? Can we agree that it's, it's too strong? It gets you too high. I got so high one time, I drove to the store and walked home. That's too high. It's way, it's too strong, man. Reported my car stolen and everything. Police was mad as hell when they called me and told me they found my car at Safeway. I'm gonna tell you about the first time I got high, which is only about a year ago. Because where I'm from, the only way people got high is they smoked. I don't like to smoke, so I never got high. But when I moved to Colorado, and I found out you can eat the weed, yeah. I'm like, okay. I'm gonna eat the weed. <laughs> I shouldn't have ate the weed. <laughs> I didn't know though, because don't nobody tell you. They just let you go there and bad, and they giggle. I know you giggle. I know you laugh, because we don't know no better. Who, anybody ever had edible before? Anybody ever? Okay. For those of you that have never had edible before, I want to paint a picture of what it's like to have an edible, just in case you want to know. I want you to imagine that you're walking in the park on a beautiful day. It is a beautiful day. The sun is shining. The birds are singing. And that walk lasts for about an hour, hour and a half, depending. Then for some reason, you don't know why, somebody runs up behind you, straps a jetpack to your back, and you just blast off. <laughs> now, at first you're like, wee. This is nice. I like this. But then you get higher and higher, and then you're like, <laughs> okay, all right, <laughs> okay. I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared now. But that's okay, because there's no possible way I can stay this high for that long. Now here's the story. It was me and my homegirl. She had never been high before either, but she told me she had a friend that made weed brownies. I said, cool, have him bring us Two weed brownies. <laughs> this dude shows up to the house with a pan full of weed brownies. There were no instructions. There wasn't a manual or a handbook that came with the pan of weed. He just left a whole pan of weed with two people that knew absolutely nothing about weed. <laughs> so we started out slow. We took a little piece. We ate that, waited 10 minutes, nothing happened. We're like, okay, maybe we didn't get enough. Now, if you notice, know there's people laughing at me already. Because they know I didn't messed up. I didn't know. So we got another piece. Ate that, waited 10 minutes, nothing happened. Got another piece and another piece. We ate the whole pan. Weed brownies. And we drunk milk with them. 30 minutes go by. My homegirl gets to tweaking out. She gets to saying stuff that's real weird, but it kind of make you think. <laughs> She's sitting on the couch next to me. She stands up, she goes, why don't our buttholes fill up with water when we take baths? Is it airtight? I said, <laughs> And then she passes out, goes to sleep, leaves you that thought in my head. <laughs> but I don't feel nothing. Another 30 minutes go by, I don't feel nothing. I'm like, dang, am I immune to the weed? I am not immune to the weed. Well, I was high. I was so high, I didn't know I was high. And that's dangerous. Because I was walking around my house doing crackhead activities, but I thought I was making rational decisions. Now, um, I told y'all we drunk milk with the brownies, and I don't expect any of you guys to know this, but all black people are lactose intolerant, okay? <laughs> Every last one you know. Look, the black male is shaking his head like, yep, verification, there you go right there, proof. So I had to take a, I had to take a dump. <laughs> I go to the bathroom, I get on the toilet. The weed had my body so relaxed. 
I couldn't push the poop out. I couldn't do it. I was straining and it wouldn't come out. I'm just sitting on the toilet smiling hard as hell. Just <laughs> with nothing moving. I couldn't believe it. I am a dare graduate. How did I find myself here? <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do. And I look over and I see the plunger. Don't get ahead of me. I mean, it works when the toilet is stopped up, so technically this should work. The only thing that stopped me from plunging my own butthole is I fell asleep on the toilet. <laughs> I was asleep for two hours. You ever sit on the toilet and your legs fell asleep? How long does that take? Five, ten minutes? I was on the toilet for two hours. I was paralyzed with my toes up to my nipples. I couldn't feel nothing from here. Damn, I didn't know what to do. I just rolled off the toilet and laid on the ground like Lieutenant Dan from Forrest Gump. That's all I could do, man. That's all I had. It's too strong. Get you too high. Oh, man, it's good being a devil, man. i from Chicago. Happy New Year, y'all. It is still. Shout out to you and stuff. Now, I went to my first Caucasian Christmas this year. Oh, my God. It was so beautiful. It looked like the postcards, man. Because let me tell you something. When it comes to holidays and, and decorations, white people ain't to be messed with. They do. I don't want to sound ignorant, but I didn't know mistletoe was a real plant. I didn't know, because I've been plastic. We hand out down through the generations. We had that thing for 175 years. It's a real plant that grew. I didn't know that. So I went to these folks' house, man. The food was beautiful. Oh, my God. It was bland, but it was beautiful. It's beautiful. The turkey was holly berry brown. Oh. You know what holly berry brown is? That's as dark as something can get before white men get uncomfortable. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. FCC, we cool with that one? Okay. Just want to make sure the FCC cool with that one, man. <laughs> you remember when we thought kids were the future? Now it's here and it's weird. Like, they weird. Is it just me? I want to make sure I'm not just picking on them. They weird, right? Okay. I was in Walmart the other day. I'm standing in line. I'm minding my own business. I'm trying to check out. I ain't bothering nobody. Standing there. All of a sudden, from behind me, I hear a lady's voice go, Stop! Stop! Get your fingers out your butt! <laughs> I turn around. It's a lady and it's a little boy standing behind me. The little boy got his hand shoved down the back of his pants. The lady sees me looking at him. She goes, I'm sorry, sir. My son had an anxiety condition. And when he gets nervous. <laughs> he sticks his fingers in his butt. I said, check this out, lady. That's not normal. Mm -mm. That's not normal at all. Then she told me, she said, well, I took him to see a psychiatrist, and the psychiatrist assured me that it's just a phase, and it's completely normal. I said, look at here, lady. There is no sticking your finger in your booty phase. Normal little kids don't do that. Who is this little boy psychiatrist? Ron Jeremy? You need a second opinion. <laughs> so we sit there when saying talk. All of a sudden, the little boy takes his hand out of his pants, Sticks his fingers directly in his mouth. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm standing there like, um, is that normal? She said, no, that's new. I said, he needs to be on medication. Why do you have this little prepubescent serial killer out here at Walmart <laughs> sticking his fingers in his butt, touching all the fruits and the vegetables? I went to the manager. I said, excuse me, sir. You need to throw away all the fruits and the vegetables. <laughs> Because a little nasty little boy over there sticking his fingers in his butt, touching all the produce. Now, I don't even know if that's true, but I want to err on the side of caution. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want one of you guys, an unsuspected, innocent victim, go to Walmart, buy a nice, beautiful bag of daily apples. You get them home, you want to eat them, but you can't because there's a bunch of little doodle prints all over them. Because this little boy is having an anxiety attack. Whoop your kids. Whoop them. They need to be beat. My mama didn't care. She didn't care what she hit me with. Whatever was close was cool with her. So one time I got in trouble at school. I came home. She was sitting on the porch waiting for me. I walked up the stairs. She started talking to me. I rolled my eyes at her. My mama reached up, 
grabbed the wind chime off the hook. <laughs> Started whooping me with that. Haven't you ever been hit with a wind chime before? It hurts, but it sounded so beautiful though. It, is. it was the most elegant butt woman I've ever had in my life. It was really nice. Welcome. Like I said, I'm originally from the west side of Chicago, and man, um, I grew up around all black people, but now I'm here in Colorado, I ain't around majority white people, that's fine, huh? I dig y'all, y'all cool, man. Y'all I feel like y'all don't get enough credit for the beautiful things you've given to the world either. Brunch, thank you. Thank you, it's delicious. Trail mix, come on, it only makes sense. Dips, white people make the most amazing dips. I don't even know what an artichoke is. Put it in a dip, delicious. We got a potluck at work. Potlucks, thank you. Put it, bring all the delicious foods in one area. It's a great idea. Thank you for that. We got a potluck at work. This woman brought some buffalo chicken dip. I said, stop playing with me. I said, white people did not turn hot wings into buffalo dip. That's unfair. This is a trap. I know a trap when I see one. This is a trap. I didn't believe it, man. I got a, a chip. I said, give me a chip, please. Give me a chip. I dipped it. I ate it. I said, Samantha, slavery? Forget about it. Jesus, this is delicious. Mmm, this ranch in here. I think I, I think I taste ranch. Mmm. I used to think black people couldn't be racist, but now I don't know. I had a friend of mine come visit me from Chicago. When he came up, I took him to this bar. The bar had ping pong tables in the back. So I asked my friend, I said, hey man, you wanna play some ping pong? He said, man, I don't wanna play no cracker ball. <laughs> I had to ask, I said, why would you call ping pong cracker ball? To which he replied, cause that looked like something white people do. Hmm. I didn't know what he was basing his assumptions off of, so what I told him was, hey man, I don't think you can call ping pong cracker ball because ping pong was invented in China. He said, I don't care! He was real angry, I don't know why. <laughs> but after the conversation, I was curious because I didn't really know if ping pong was invented in China. I'm just used to seeing Chinese people play it. <laughs> so I just assumed that's where it came from. <laughs> Which is kind of messed up, not that I say it out loud, but whatever, that's not the point. I looked it up, and what I found out, it's true, you can look this up if you want to. Ping pong was invented in the 19th century in England. It was a game that was played by the elites after dinner. They would use cigar boxes as a paddle, they would use books as a net. I didn't know that. I thought that was pretty cool, so as it turns out, it is something white people do. Touche, touche, black man. <laughs> Cracker ball forever. My name is Anthony Armstrong. Thank you guys. I am out of here. Give it up for your host. Anthony, hilarious. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for performing. Am I still on? Am I still on? I can't hear myself. Okay, there we go. There I'm we go. Still on. This one's just fun. I can hear it. So, so let the people know where they can follow you. You got anything going on coming up? Um, I'm all over town. I got a show tomorrow at El Chirito. If you want to come down there and check it out. Uh, they told me some rules. I can't say some stuff, so I'll stop right there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm on uh, Armstrong Comedy. That's everything. Twitter, See you Instagram. Right there on the TV. Oh, yeah. They... Showing it across the TV, so that's me, the one that you see at the bottom. Is it the bottom or the top? I didn't see it. Bottom, lower third. Lower third of the bottom. That is the exact location where you can find all it's of right my. There. So point, there point it is again. To your feet right now. That, right here? Yeah, see over there? Boom. Got it. <laughs> it's over there. So all of you stalk him immediately online. Thank you again. I welcome you all. Come on. Let's Give it up for Anthony Armstrong one more time. Yeah. Awesome. Okay.